Hello, can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Okay, awesome. Okay, so you can see the screen right now. So what I need you to do is to type your response, right? So I was saying just now, uh, some of the questions uh, we didn't go through because they were about the lab. Oh yeah, same, same. I had to update Zoom. It prompted me to update Zoom before you. I think it was like the latest update that came around. So caused everything to just crash like that. Okay, so yeah, I had to update Zoom as well. So as I was saying, Huh? Well, what do you mean? Weird. The layout is a bit different, right? Yeah, mine is like, I don't know. It's okay, but I can still see. Yeah, so uh, it's fine. Uh, okay, so are you able to type out the answers? You just have to type out A, B, C, or D. Yeah, you know, uh, so I was saying that uh, this is not a test, okay? So I just want to experience like a Sec one, sec one, what are you going to see? You won't be able to answer all the questions because there are some questions that, uh, some topics that we didn't go through at all. Like example, this lab, the laboratory thing, I, I didn't go through it. But we would like to use some common sense. See, okay, let me see. Yeah. Okay, two practices in the lab, this kind of broken glass, yeah, where safety goggles, yeah, fire extinguisher, four access Yeah, so one, eh? No, 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 it's not C. Yeah. D. No. Okay, so what is wrong? Eh? You see, eh? pouring excess chemical back into containers, you cannot do that. You know, if you, you, if you have extra chemical, you cannot pour back into the chemical because you contaminate the, the bottles. Okay. So, answer is two and three. B. Two and three. Okay. Now, why you cannot throw broken glass into the dustbin? Because uh, those some some people might handle them, right? And then they might cut their hand in the dustbin. You know, people people will have to pack the trash bin and throw away. Yeah. So it's just a uh, B two and three only. Okay. Next one two. Where to throw? Oh, uh, every lab has a science lab rep. That means there's like another, it's, the person is not a teacher, okay, but it's like a technician. So you just let the technician know and then uh, the person will handle it for you. Okay, because in the science lab, um, there are too many chemicals. Uh, so the teacher alone is not enough. They actually have another lab technician. Okay, so just say, hey, just raise your hand up. I broke this test too, okay? So, happens all the time. When I was in school, I think I broke like four or five test tubes because they are they are very fragile glass, you know? And then uh, you don't have to drop the thing. You just need to like hold the thing and then uh, if it's a bit too strong, the thing will just break, all right? Or when you're boiling something, it just, it just breaks. Yeah, so just, just tell the lab person, okay? Okay, let's take a look at question number two. Which of the following may corrode the skin? Ah, corrosive. What is corrosive? What's your answer for you? D. Yeah, very good. Okay. You see, you didn't know all this, right? So this is like a helium is like an element, there's a compound, it's mercury is found in the thermometer. And then here, eh, you see the word acid. All right, so acid is corrosive. Very good. Next. Okay, so still want to add 15.50. Which of the apparatus is most suitable to measure 15.50? So once again, it's a lab question. In the lab, uh, you'll be shown what's a burette, beaker, measuring cylinder, and a keypad. All right, so in this case, the answer is A. Burette. The burette will be used to measure uh, exactly 15.50. Okay, ah, this one you can try. What volume is shown? C 22. Um, 
15, let me check, huh? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ah, it's not 22. Yeah, very good. Okay, so the answer is 21. Why? Now, this line is called the meniscus. Okay, I'm not sure if you remember. This line is called the meniscus. So, a meniscus uh, is a curved line of every liquid. Okay, every liquid has got this curved thing. You don't read the top, you read the bottom okay, of the meniscus, which in this case is. 21. Which are following about the periodic table is incorrect? B. All right, B. Uh, both elements and compounds are listed. Ah, correct. Because only elements, okay, there are no compounds there. Very good, Lisa. Same chemical properties. Okay, number six. This is hard, okay, you need to. Get a copy of the periodic table. Okay, you can go Google. Get a periodic table. You need to see where are they? Where's lithium, hydrogen, carbon, all this? Oh, count it again. You need to you need to get a periodic table. Uh, okay, so you can hear me now. Yeah? That type of yeah. Y E A H. Yeah, okay, awesome. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on. You know, <clears throat> this Wi Fi thing is uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so while it's working, I, okay, I'm just going to go through, okay, very quickly because we left it about, uh, about 20 minutes. Okay, since the thing is up right now, I'm just going to keep moving like a train. Stop me if you don't, if you, if you can't hear what I'm saying or you don't understand. Okay, so let's take a look here. Huh? Question number six. Which of the following pairs of elements have the same chemical properties? So uh, elements that have the same chemical properties, they are in the same group, okay? In the periodic table, images. I'm just gonna go quickly. All right, so it's a periodic table. So if you see the periodic table and if they are in the same group, that means vertical. Mm. Periodic. Uh, if vertically and yeah, they are in the same group, okay, you get the idea. So we gotta see which one is in the same group. Lithium, hydrogen, no carbon, and nitrogen, they are not in the same group. Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, sodium, and chlorine, no, they are not in the same group. Nitrogen and phosphorus, so let me find a good periodic table. Nitrogen and phosphorus, okay, so nitrogen is here, phosphorus is here, so they are in the same group. And because they are in the same group, they have the same chemical properties. So the answer is C for this, okay? Next one, which of the following are physical properties of calcium? So calcium is a metal, <clears throat> okay? Calcium is a metal. Uh, if it is a metal, uh, it is supposed to be sonorous, malleable, and have high melting point because it's, it's a metal. So the answer would be A, next one. Uh, because uh, we, we remember the properties of metals, okay? Eight. So a human tool is largely hydroxyapatite. You're not supposed to know that, you know? So they're just giving you some weird chemical. So how many types of elements does hydroxyapatite contain? Remember, uh, I said the first 20 elements you got to memorize. Okay, can you remember what is Ca or what? Can you say the answer? What is Ca? What is Ca? Do you, do you remember what is Ca? Can you hear me? What's CA? CA? Yeah, awesome. See? So remember. So this calcium P is uh, phosphorus, oxygen, and hydrogen. So calcium, phosphorus, oxygen, hydrogen, four. So answer is four types of elements. 
Okay, this one. Oops. Okay, so student mixed some soybean powder in water and mixed soybean milk. Then he tried to separate the soybean powder through filtration. He was unsuccessful. Why? Because when you take the soy soy soybean milk powder uh, and you put it in the water, the whole thing dissolves. So if it dissolves, how can you separate using filtration? So the answer is uh, and the uh, A, the answer is A. Soybean milk is a solution. Right? No residue. So you cannot uh, filter it. Okay, next one. Uh -huh. Which of the following can be separated using magnetic attraction? That means you use the uh, magnet to, to separate them, right? So one of them has to be magnetic material, the other one is non-magnetic material. So the answer is uh, going to be D, it's going to be C. Paper and chrome, the answer is A. La. Okay, it's A, yeah. Uh, so far, do you find it easy or difficult? Just, just the MCQ alone. Is it easy or difficult? Easy or difficult? In case you can't hear me. Easy or difficult? So far, easy or difficult? Fine, okay, that's great. Yeah, suddenly we get connection again. It's so weird. Okay, ten. Which of the following can be okay? Done, done, done. Okay, then we go on to the uh section B. Yeah. So I think it's not too tough. Huh? Okay, this part I skip. I'm skipping this because we didn't do any lab stuff. Okay, these are on the lab. Alright. Next. Okay, baking soda reacts with vinegar to produce carbon dioxide gas. Remember, vinegar is a type of acid. So acid plus this uh, baking soda, so it produces carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so vinegar plus this thing gives you know, off carbon dioxide gas. So this is under the uh, acid and alkali ch chapter. Okay, so label the apparatus. Now, once again, you don't know the apparatus because you didn't go through the lab, but this is like a, a conical flask. Okay, this is a, a conical flask. And you know all this right, in the lab, right? This is a gas cylinder. Right one on the right side. So what's the method of uh, gas collection here? It's just upward delivery. Right, because the gas is produced, it gets bubbled through the water and it's collected over here. Yeah. So student wants to collect and measure the volume of carbon dioxide, name and draw a suitable apparatus. So how do you measure? Uh, we use a gas syringe. So this part I'm totally skipping, okay? Because we didn't go to the lab, okay? Next. Okay, so caffeine is a substance found in coffee beans. The graph shows the solubility of caffeine in two different solvents, ethyl acetate and water at different temperature. So what is the meaning of solubility? Do you remember that? Can you tap out? What's the meaning of solubility? Okay, that was, uh, we actually went through that. That was part of the um, the stuff that we went through. What is the, see, definition, right? Uh, you try, can you try? Tap out. What is the meaning? <laughs> I forgot. Okay, you see, uh, but this is not a test again, right? I just want to let you know, these are stuff that are being tested. You test things like that, you know, it's like, you look at this word, oh, yeah, I know, la, I know what I saw already. I just don't know how to, how to, how to phrase the thing, yeah? So, so this is called definition, right? And they give you one mark, two mark for stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to type it out, yeah? Solubility is the ability of the solute to dissolve. And, okay. It's the ability of solute to dissolve in the solvent. That's it. I need to get one mark for that. Okay. And remember this SA1, no? SA1 is like uh 30%, 40%. So what's the relationship between temperature and solubility of caffeine? So as the temperature increases, the uh, amount of caffeine dissolves also increases. Okay, my nose is acting up anything. Okay. 
So what is the maximum mass of caffeine that you can dissolve in 200 milliliters of water? So we find 200 milliliters of water. Caffeine. So a bit of caffeine, uh, maximum in water, 50, right? So this is 100. So if you have uh, 200, that will be like 100 grams. Okay, uh, sorry, at 25 degrees Celsius, sorry. So you got to look at 25 degrees Celsius, yeah? So if the temperature is not hot, 25 is like a uh, normal room temperature. Okay, so at 25 degrees Celsius here, uh, you get like how much of caffeine? It's about six grams. Six grams per 100 milliliter. So the question is, if it was 200 milliliters, so it's 12 grams. So we will write 12 grams. Okay, so 12 grams is the answer. All right, so you see, you see example. Uh, all right, so I'm going to skip this. Okay, E1. Ah, this one you can answer. Caffeine has a chemical formula of the, 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 the. Is it a compound mixture? Oh, we did a lot of this, yeah? Is it a compound mixture? Yeah, I think the internet is having like a, like a allergic reaction, eh? That's like me, yeah? Okay, so we got five minutes left, but we can quickly round up the thing, yeah? So luckily I started off with, uh, can you hear me, right? Can you hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's just round things out. Okay, very quickly. So, so you see, uh, questions like this. Yeah. I hope. I hope. Okay. I hope you have an idea of what you need to do. You know, when you're in set one, so definitions are important. Uh, you know, all those my, minor details. Like, you know, all those details. Like, uh, you know, what's C, what's K, what's N, what's O. Yeah. All these are like the uh, the first twenty chemical. Uh, formulas are then you know like like for example you see this particular question right is caffeine is it a compound or mixture so the answer is uh it is a compound why because you need to remember the definition of a compound two or more different elements chemically combined so here you have carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen which is definitely more than two and they are chemically combined so it cannot be a mixture it's a compound that's it right and then they ask you to, oh, name, uh, state is group number, period number. So all these are uh, keywords uh, that you need to know, okay? So now the time is exactly, I think, like 11.30, right? I'm actually going to stop here because I don't want to cut off halfway, okay? Do you have any final questions before you begin your school term? Okay, awesome. Okay, so I think I think uh, so far, even though, you know, despite all this, uh, interruptions with the internet i think it's been great yeah uh even though you're not able to talk but but it's okay i'm like entertaining myself <laughs> okay no worries huh yeah it's totally okay so uh in future right if you want to come back to us just let us know okay we can have online but probably we try to figure out a way to make the internet a bit more reliable yeah but if not i think you've been a great student uh so far Okay, you have been uh, very responsive uh, despite the internet uh, interruption. So without further questions, I'd like to wish you all the best Okay, for next year. This is a new set one term coming, make more new friends and yeah, a happy new year to you. Okay, that's all. Okay, bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.